Today we're taking a quick look at the composite slab floor structure which is used on this building here for example. I'll show some basic considerations from an architectural perspective like spans, floor build up, services integration and I'll also talk about how the system works structurally. This is a small section of a typical structural composite floor system. You've got your concrete deck, which is pretty thin, sitting on steel beams. And on top of the steel beams are either shot fired or welded studs. They can either be double rows of studs, like here, or single rows and they allow the steel beams to act compositely, hence the name. So instead of just all the weight being taken by the steel alone, the studs allow the steel and the concrete to work together. Therefore you can get a much stronger section and a lot more strength out of the system. The concrete is sitting on profiled metal sheeting. You can see the profile there. And that shape just gives it strength the way it's drawn. And the other advantage of it is that you can install this steel structure then later on come through and put the metal sheets down and then put the studs on or sometimes the studs are already there and then after all that's done come through and pour the concrete. So it's a very staged process and quite quick on site because all this steel work will be done prior to bringing it to site. And all of the connections which I haven't shown in this diagram are usually simply supported connections for the most part. So it's quite simple to erect and build. So as far as spans and column layout, the composite system is actually very flexible. The concrete deck on the metal sheeting only has actually quite a small span available. Here I've shown it as two and a half meters. Uh, that can be a bit more depending on whether it's a continuous span and the load and other things, the thickness, but roughly around that area, maybe up to three meters would be a maximum. In the other direction, we've got no limit because that, that deck is spanning in that direction. So in the other way, we can span as long as we uh, have the depth available for the beam. So if this is a very massively deep beam, we can have a really huge span. Now, we can also open the span up on this direction of the decking by having secondary framing. So I've got columns at each beam at the moment, but if I start stretching that out, my script here is gonna put in some secondary framing, which you can see, and if I lock that in, you can see these yellow beams here, which are breaking up the concrete deck keeping it below the two and a half meters for each span of the decking, but we don't have the column. And you can see this beam's got a lot deeper here based on that really large span there. So in the other direction, I've got a good span as a rule of thumb, which is about six and a half meters. So if I go up to just under six and a half, I can get that clear span with a reasonable beam depth. It's not too much of a problem. If I go above that, I'll get an extra row of columns in there. 
but the six and a half meters is just a rough rule it can be anything really um, again coming down to the size of the beam this is the type of floor build up you would expect for a composite floor slab so starting above the top of concrete level you've got your floor finishes sometimes um, there will be a cavity in there for services but you've obviously got your tiles and carpet or whatever other finishes you need um, then structurally you've got your slab depth which for a composite slab can be anywhere between roughly 120 mil anywhere up to say I don't know 250 mil maybe even in some special areas um, and then below that you've got your beams um, again that varies based on span but you wouldn't get anything lower than 200 mil and below that again you have to remember that these beams will bend so when they're installed initially they'll have a camber if they're long span which means that they will be slightly bending upwards once the concrete comes on in theory they'll flatten out perfectly it won't be exactly perfect so you have a flat beam when it's installed then when you come and add the load the furniture and mostly the live load and other things like that you will have this beam start bending down into this deflection zone which I've got called maximum deflection and this again depends on span um, but should be in the order of around 20 to 50 mil in most circumstances but can be more if it's a really long span and then you'll have finally you've got your space for ceiling and services so to get services through this system you're going to have to feed them under the beams there is another one other way of getting services through this system because these beams really get in the way of um, the cavity which is really from all the way from the bottom of the slab down to the ceiling and that's to have a penetration in the beam and a rough rule of thumb for the size of the penetration in these beams would be one third of the depth so if this is 300 mil deep you could have a 100 diameter penetration in the web of the beam um, there's other limitations on that though because they can only be in certain areas of the beam not close to the edge and sometimes not close to the center so you'd have to refer to a structural engineer for that more detail and there's another way of getting services through which is to notch this beam at the end um, so if I just draw a rectangle here you can sometimes notch a fair section out of the end of this beam but again you'd have to get advice from a structural engineer on that dependent on the particulars of the beam the spans and the load etc and lastly I've got some site photos here this is from above obviously with the metal sheeting and this is where the line of the beam is and you can see the studs which are shot fired on don't worry about the reinforcement that uh, wasn't completed at the time and from below you can see the decking being supported by beams and one thing to point out as well is that you normally will need you always need to fire protect the connection detailing to the columns for these steel beams so here it's uh, fire spray sometimes you can use other methods like you could box that steel beam out or you could use intermittent paint um, in this instance they've got away with not fire protecting the majority of the beam that'd be a fire engineered solution but 
you can't always do that. So sometimes you'll have to have fire protection on all of these beams. In fact, that's the normal case. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.